I'm a little bit too old for speed dating, so when Steve invited me to give a speed lecture, I decided to agree so as not to miss the next great new thing. Um, so diving right into the topic of interest, uh, the first law of thermodynamics, as you know, says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Uh, when applied to living systems, we have the familiar equation, calorie intake minus expenditure equals calories stored, or in humans, change in body fat, since most of our calories are stored in, in adipose tissue. According to the conventional interpretation of this law, obesity represents the voluntary failure over energy balance. In other words, in an environment with ubiquitous tasty foods, we easily overconsume without enough opportunities for physical activity. We don't burn off those calories. The excess metabolic fuels, rich calorie-rich fuels, build up in the bloodstream, glucose, fatty acids, and the like, and are forced into fat cells, causing these fat cells to become anabolic and expand. So from this perspective, the simple solution is just to eat less and move more. Unfortunately, things haven't worked out so well. According to NHANES, a uh, nationally representative survey, only one in six overweight or obese adults report ever having lost 10% of their body weight for just one year. And that's likely, this depressing result is likely to be overestimated because we all think we're a little taller and a little thinner than we actually are. And in fact, we know that standard treatments for obesity have been an abject failure. Um, and we have to ask why. Why such a simple paradigm, just eat less and move more, has failed? Well, according to another view, which also adheres to the laws of thermodynamics, we've had the arrows of causality in the wrong direction. They don't move from right to left, they move from left to right. So this view places the focus on the adipocyte. According to this model, something has triggered fat cells to become anabolic and suck up too many calories. And so the bloodstream has too few, not too many calories, and that's perceived as an energy crisis by the brain which drives us to get hungry and eat more to replace those missing calories in the blood, and also lower energy expenditure to conserve. And what has triggered fat cells to become anabolic? P potentially many things, but the most likely culprit is high insulin levels. Insulin is the ultimate anabolic hormone. And what is driving insulin secretion? Uh, that's endocrinology 101, refined carbohydrates. So to look at this, possibility. We, in this study, I'll just show you briefly three studies. This was with uh, 12 obese adolescents studied in a crossover fashion with three meals, either instant oatmeal, highly processed, old-fashioned or steel-cut oats, same amount of carbohydrate but minimally processed, or a vegetable omelet with fruit, no processed carbohydrate at all. And so we saw after the subjects ate these foods that blood sugar rose the highest after the instant oatmeal after, compared to the other two. And insulin rose, I'm not showing you, insulin also rose higher. But then blood sugar came down into a relatively hypoglycemic range under the influence of all the insulin secreted. This was a statistically significant comparison. And at that time, epinephrine or adrenaline, that's an emergency stress hormone, secreted at very high levels, same calories, but very different metabolic states later, and when we gave subjects free access to food, they con consumed seven or 800 calories more after the high glycemic index rapidly digesting inst uh, uh, instant oatmeal. Well, what's happening at the brain at this time? So uh, in a second study, we looked at uh, 12, uh, another study with 12 overweight and obese individuals. This was a double-blind study, hard to do in nutrition, we gave them milkshakes that had the same protein, fat, and carbohydrate. So one was fast-acting carbohydrate, fast-digesting, high glycemic index, the other slow-digesting. The taste of the meals was controlled so that people couldn't tell one as more sweeter than the other. And as expected, blood sugar rose again higher after the fast-acting milkshake than the slow-acting milkshake. Hunger increased more rapidly after the fast-acting milkshake. And then functional magnetic resonance imaging of the brain, comparing these two meals, showed one area lit up very intensely after the high glycemic, rapidly digesting milkshake. 
the p-value here, even adjusting for multiple comparisons throughout the brain, was very strong. This area is called the nucleus accumbens. It's considered uh, the, cent it's the center of the striatal dopaminergic reward system, and it's considered ground zero for the classic addictions, cocaine, heroin, smoking, alcoholism, raising the possibility that some of the highly processed carbohydrates in our diets may be hijacking these, fund these primordial pleasure pathways, producing, in effect, food addiction. So in the last study I'll describe, um, we took, uh, we looked at, we tried to look at this phenomenon over a little longer time period. We took 21 obese young adults who'd been weight stable, gave them everything they ate for a seven month period, first brought their weight down by 10 to 15%. That places stress on their physiology. And then studied them for one month at a time on either a conventional, low fat, high carbohydrate diet, or at the other extreme, a very low carbohydrate Atkins type diet, and in the middle, uh, sort of a low glycemic index Mediterranean type diet. And here's what we saw. After weight loss, when the subjects, remember this was a crossover study, when the subjects were on the low fat diet, their metabolic rate dropped by 400 calories a day. Huge plummet, more than could be expected by the weight loss. On the low carb diet, no statistically significant decline in energy expenditure at all. This difference in the low glycemic index diet in the middle showed an intermediate result. This difference of 325 calories a day is the whole obesity epidemic, if that were persistent. That difference, if allowed to extrapolate, would amount to about 25 to 30 pounds. So in summary, and I think I'll remain on time. Yep. <laughs> I think I'll just sit here for 30 seconds and enjoy the <laughs> <si> no. <laughs> The conventional approach to weight loss, the calorie-restricted diet, has poor efficacy in an environment with unlimited calorie availability. An alternative approach aims to reduce the anabolic drive, leading to reduced adiposity with ad libitum conditions, free feeding. Reduced anabolic drive may be achieved by lowering total carbohydrates or the processing of the carbohydrates and other qualitative changes in our diet and our lifestyle that we have, didn't have time to talk about. And future research really needs to compare strategies, conventional strategies, which is focused on just forcing calories down versus strategies that improve dietary quality and allow the body to control its weight more effectively.